so. Hi, my name is Anahita Varami, and let me get this started. I studied at Texas A&M University, so not far from TCU. Um, I came to this conference actually two years ago because I decided on my research topic as a um, senior honors fellow student. And so I was just on the internet looking for um, getting a start on my research and I found out about the International Network on Personal Meaning. So I came to this conference two years ago and it really helped me um, get started on my research and um, you'll see that I use Dr. Wong's personal meaning profile in here. So it's relevant. And uh, I did my research under the supervision of my advisor, Dr. David H. Rosen, and with assistance from two graduate students, Randolph Arnaud and Nathan Mascaro. And the title of my uh, research is The Relationships Between Meaning, Purpose in Life, Hope, and Psychosocial Development. Um, it's just a correlational study that I did. Uh, and basically, the reason we chose to do this study was because intuitively psychosocial development and purpose in life seem to be related. And it's also suggested in literature, but as far as we know, there hasn't been any uh, empirical data su uh, supporting that. So that's what we did. And primarily in this presentation, I'll be sharing with you um, just some backup information, then the methodology, the hypotheses that we made, and finally some significant results that we found. So this is, should be common knowledge here. Uh, Viktor Frankl, he developed logotherapy, which is meaning-centered psychotherapy. And he also coined the term um, existential vacuum, which is this feeling of emptiness. Um, and as a result of the existential vacuum, one may suffer from depression, aggression, or addiction. And in D uh, Dr. Frankl's book, Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, he puts these three things of depression, aggression, and addiction together, and he calls it the mass neurotic triad. Now, the goal of logotherapy is to remind the patient of the meaning of his or her life. Again, it's not to tell them what it is, but just to kind of get the question out there and get them to think about it, and hopefully to eliminate the existential vacuum and its adverse effects. Now, Eric Erickson, um, on the other hand, he developed the theory of psychosocial development, which influences one's personality, and he says that each individual goes through eight stages uh, throughout a life cycle, and each stage has its own uh, psychological issue, conflict, um, and each conflict has a positive or negative side. And Eric Erickson doesn't say that someone achieves necessarily one aspect of that conflict, but falls somewhere between on the continuum. Um, so I'm gonna go over those eight stages. The first stage is early infancy, which is characterized by trust versus mistrust. He also attributes a virtue to each stage and says that if you successfully resolve a stage, you develop this virtue. Uh, and if you look at the virtues before I go over them, you can see that a lot of them have, com if not hope and purpose in them, it's a component of what those constructs are. So the first stage, if, if successfully resolved, results in hope and ultimately the development of faith. The second stage is during the toddler years. It's characterized by the conflict of autonomy versus shame and doubt. And the virtue that is achieved through successful resolution of that stage is willpower. The third stage is early childhood, characterized by initiative versus guilt and can result in purpose, a sense of purpose. The fourth stage is middle childhood, characterized by industry versus inferiority, and the virtue attained there is competence. The fifth stage of adolescence is, deals with the conflict of identity versus identity confusion, which can result in fidelity. The sixth state stage is young adulthood, characterized by intimacy versus isolation, and can result in the virtue of love. The seventh stage of middle adulthood um, is the conflict of generativity versus stagnation, and this can result in attaining the virtue of care. And lastly, the older adulthood um, is the crisis of integrity versus despair, 
and this can result in wisdom. Now, the literature suggests that Erickson's theory of psychosocial development and Frankel's theory of purpose are related. Uh, this is an article from uh, the Counseling Psychologist by Brammer, and he wrote that Erickson's final stage of integrity versus despair is a major contribution to developmental counseling theory. And he's mainly talking about counseling theory in older adults. Counseling helps the older person to perceive the meaning of his or her life and to feel satisfied that how one lives this last stage gives meaning to all the others. The alternative to this perception of meaningful life is to court despair. So he's saying that in the last stage of um, integrity versus despair, if you successfully resolve it, basically you'll have a sense of meaning, and if you don't, then you'll, you'll be in despair and, and can lead to depression. So it kind of, um, it goes along with the existential vacuum idea. And Eric Erickson writes himself in Childhood and Society that although aware of the relativity of all various lifestyles which have given meaning to human striving, the possessor of integrity is ready to defend the dignity of his own lifestyle against all physical and economic threats. Now, uh, Viktor Frankl in his book Man's Search for Meaning, um, where he writes about his experience in the concentration camp, he talks a lot about hope and how that increased their survival. And um, this is just one quote from the book. They, which he's talking about his fellow inmates in Auschwitz, must not lose hope, but should keep their courage and the certainty that the hopelessness of our struggle, struggle did not detract from its dignity and its meaning. And um, Erickson's theory of psychosocial development draws the connection with hope because his the virtue attained in the first um, stage of trust versus mistrust is hope. So that's the theory behind why we're doing our study. Our first hypothesis is that those who have a high degree of purpose and meaning in their lives will also have a greater degree of successful psychosocial development and in the eight stages of Ericksonian um, theory. So in other words, high scores on the personal meaning profile will be positively correlated with high scores on the positive dimensions of development as measured by the me measure of psychosocial development. And I will go into each of these measures that we used um, in more detail. Our second hypothesis is that subjects who have high meaning and purpose and positive psychosocial development will be more hopeful. So our methodology was that we um, gave so these four measures Gave four measures, which I'll talk more about later, um, to 304 undergraduate introduction to psychology students at Texas A&M. And the ages were 17 to 42, with the mean age of about 19. And we had a, a good 50% um, female, 50% male. About. So the four measures that we, we used were the personal meaning profile, the measure of psychosocial development, and we use two different hope scales. One is the Hearth Hope Scale and then the Schneider Hope Scale. And they are different, and I'll go into that also in a little bit. So the personal meaning profile, this is um, measure, measures people's perception of personal meanings, meaning in their lives. Uh, it's a 57-item self-report inventory with a 7-point Likert scale. And some si sample items are uh, I have learned that setbacks and disappointments are an inevitable part of life, and I have a sense of mission or calling. Uh, Dr. Wong, when he developed the profile, he developed it with seven dimensions of meaning. So when, you, when we gave this, this uh, measure out, you can compute a score for overall personal meaning that one perceives that they have, and also in each dimension. Uh, the seven dimensions are achievement, relationship, religion, self-transcendence, self-acceptance, intimacy, and fair treatment or perceived justice. Uh, the measure that we used to uh, assess Ericksonian personality development was the measure of psychosocial development. This is a 112-item questionnaire with a five-point Likert scale with um, items such as 
generally trust people and not getting anywhere or accomplishing anything. Now the Hearth Hope Scale is, uh, was developed by a nurse and this taps into several different dimensions of hope such as goal-oriented cognition, non-goal-oriented optimism, and perceived social and spiritual support. So the main difference between this Hope Scale and the Schneider Hope Scale is that this one has a spiritual component to it. And later on in our results, we'll see the effects that that has um, on the correlations. This is a self-report 30 item questionnaire with a four point Likert scale uh, with items such as I have faith that gives me comfort and I am looking forward to the future. This is the Snyder Hope Scale, uh, which was the other one that we used, which is a cognitive theory of hope. It measures an individual's positive goal-oriented thinking. It's a 12-item, four-point Likert scale questionnaire with um, items such as, I en energetically pursue my goals, and I usually find myself worrying about something. So the way we analyzed our data uh, was using the Pearson's correlation coefficient, and all correlations are significant to the 0 .001 level. And before I go into the results, we really, I was personally surprised, I'd really never done research before, and I was surprised by the consistent high correlations that we found between all of these, these constructs. Um, our results were that the overall scores on the personal meaning profile and overall scores on the measure of psychosocial development uh, had a correlation of 0 0.711, which is pretty high. And this is uh, broken down into the, the eight stages, which you, you can also, with the, per, the measure of psychosocial development, acquire overall, so psychosocial development score and a score for each stage. So you can see that um, the first stage has a high correlation again. They're all st excuse me, statistically significant. Um, but you can see that the highest ones are the, the first one of trust versus mistrust, and then the last couple, um, particularly the integrity versus despair, which was in the theory that we, um, we've been reading. Then looking at uh, hope versus Ericksonian development, again, all of these scores were significant, but you do see that the Hearth Hope Scale gives higher correlations. And this is also something consistent that we found. And we also looked um, later on after, just at the end of this research, we saw this consistency and we looked at the difference between the scores of the Hearth Hope Scale and the Schneider Hope Scale and found that the difference was significant. So the Hearth, Hearth Hope Scale did have significantly higher correlations. So the overall scores on the uh, measure, measures of psychosocial development had um, high correlations with both the Hearth Hope Scale and the Snyder Hope Scale, as well as the positive resolution of stage one, which was supposed to be hope. For both the Hearth and Snyder Hope Scales with the overall scores of personal meaning. and for the religion dimension of personal meaning profile. Also in Dr. Frankel's book, um, Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, there's research on meaning in life. And this uh, was using the Crumbaugh and Mahalik Purpose in Life Test, which was the original measure that I was planning on using before coming to this conference. So in that research, um, the Dr. Frankel cites, it says that Meaning in life can be attained regardless of age, gender, IQ, even religion, or religiosity. So here it's kind of the fact that the personal meaning profile has a religion dimension and scores so highly with hope, but more highly with the Hearth Hope Scale, which includes the spirituality component. I think it kind of takes a turn on, on that, and what we're hearing a lot here is that spirituality and health and spirituality, spirituality and meaning is significant. The relation between those is significant, in fact. So the conclusions that we drew um, 
for that there is a moderate to large correlation that is statistically significant between high scores on the measure of psychosocial development and high scores on the personal meaning profile, which means that overall positive resolution of Erickson's eight stages is correlated with one's perception of meaning and purpose in their lives. Also, high scores on the measures of personality, uh, psychosocial development are positively correlated with scores on both the Hearth Hope Scale and the Snyder Hope Scale. Uh, successful psychosocial development is correlated with a greater sense of hope. And there is a positive correlation between scores on the personal meaning profile and both hope scales. A relationship exists between a high sense of overall meaning and high hope. And lastly, the Hearth Hope Scale scores have a higher correlation to the religion dimension of the hope of the uh, personal meaning profile than scores from the Snyder Hope Scale. I'm sorry, that's not the last one. Oh yeah, it is. So that's just claiming that the spirituality is a, an important factor in the construct. And that's our research. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> wow. No, I I don't know that. Um, yeah, and they that's the majority of our our study are the the freshmen. Um, the one thing that I I do think about this study is that because it is dealing with the psychosocial development of a life a life lifetime. Um, I think it'd be interesting to do this, the study with older adults to see maybe people who are closer to the eighth stage and developing wisdom if there is a big difference. Not to say that freshmen in college can't have, couldn't have reached that stage because Erickson doesn't claim that either. Um, but I don't know the difference between a freshman in college and other population. So, do you think that they would be more hopeful? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that'd be interesting to study. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just hard to get the seniors to take those questionnaires. <laughs> they don't have to. I would take it to a, an older population and do a comparison just to see um, the different stages of psychosocial development, see where people are, or how the, how the different age populations score on the psychosocial development scale. Thank you.